about an hour. Or so. <laughs> the lane is three corners. That's right. Let's see, John. Can you John yes? What? And you your look? face on the back. This new village man. Oh, I have a, I have a custom one. Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, Judy. Hey, Mike. Congratulations. Village of Wheeling regular meeting is now called to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Here. Trustee Vogel? Here. Trustee Brady? Here. Trustee Hine? Here. Trustee Argyris? Here. Trustee Here? Here. President Averscato? Here. Yeah. Approve of the minutes for the regular meeting of December 19th? So moved. Motion made by Trustee Argyris? Second. Second by Trustee Brady. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Argyris? Yes. Trustee Here? Yes. President Averscato? Yes. Mr. Fandilis, any changes to the agenda? Uh, yes, Madam President. I'd like to ask for a motion to remove item 13B. I'm sorry, 11B. I apologize. 11. 11B. It's consent agenda item B. 11B. Thank so, you. Do so I have moved. a motion? Motion made by Trustee Ajiris. Second. Second by Trustee Here. Roll call, please. Uh, Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Argyris? Yes. Trustee Here? Yes. President Abascato? Yes. Do you have any proclamations? No, Madam President. What's this? Microphone. No, this stacking. Oh, that's from way back. Yeah. Thank you. Appointments and confirmations? We'd like to uh, present uh, Michael Conway as uh, police sergeant. Oh, this was an old one. I'm Michael Conway. Having been appointed to the position of sergeant. Having been appointed to the position of sergeant. In the village of Wheeling. In the village of Wheeling. In the counties of Cook and Lake. The counties of Cook and Lake. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of this Illinois. Right. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office of sergeant. Of the office of sergeant. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Before we get started, I'd like you to take a look up here, see if you're familiar. <laughs> a little pl uh, collage of uh, Mike's life. Um, before we get started, I want to acknowledge some people in the audience, some uh, Board of Police and Fire Commissioners who work very hard. They're a big part of our promotional process. We have uh, Commissioner Bill Simpson, Commissioner Al, um, and as far as retired officers from the Wheeling Police Department, I'd like to acknowledge Officer Hugh Versteeg and Officer Bob Pre. Thanks for coming. Um, introduce his family, but before I do that, I'd like to acknowledge his uh, twin brother. It's hard to tell the resemblance, but he's a Chicago Police Sergeant, uh, Pat Conway. In December of this year, the board uh, passed a budget which allowed the Wheeling Police Department for the first time in almost 23 years to go from 20, I'm sorry, from eight authorized sergeants to nine. Not an additional person, but a reclassification of a corporal position to a sergeant position. And it is my honor tonight to present uh, Sergeant Mike Conway with star number 74, Wheeling Police Star.
congratulations, and if you would, uh, take a moment and introduce your family. Uh, thanks, Chief. I have my wife, uh, Diane, here, my son, Mike, my other son, Jack, my daughter, Emma, my sister, Kim, and my brother-in-law, Dan, and their children. I have my cousins, my aunts here, and a lot of friends. <laughs> And I, you know, I would just like to thank the board, too, for this uh, opportunity and the Wheeling Command staff for all the opportunities I've been given since I've been hired here as a police officer. Thank you. Well, we're glad that you chose us, and we're glad that we chose you because you have been a plus for this Wheeling Fire, Wheeling Fire, I'm sorry, Wheeling Police Department. And... Uh, we congratulate you because it's an honor to be able to be able to have people go up in the ranks and for what you've given back to us. So we thank you. And with that, do I have a motion? We will have a uh, little break so. and uh, go for coffee and at this time in our celebration of you becoming our new sergeant. Have a motion by so. Trustee here. Second. Second by Trustee Lang. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. Trustee Argeris. Yes. Trustee here. Yes. President Abascado. Yes. We will uh, come back at quarter to seven. The village board meeting will reconsume at yeah. 6.48. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. Second. Motion made by Trustee Vogel, second by Trustee Ajiris. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yep. Trustee Ajiris? Yes. Trustee Here? Yes. President Abascado? Yes. Do you have any citizens concerned and comments? No, Madam President. Thank you. We have no staff reports. Consent agenda. Um, all items listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussions of these items unless a board member or a citizen so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered after all regular agenda items. So moved. Second. Um, Madam President, made by, yes. I'd like to remove uh, item 11D for discussion. 11D? Yes. Okay. It will now be... It will become uh, 13 13E. 13E. Thank you. Who made a motion? Motion made by Trustee... Uh, Ajuris. Ajuris, second by Trustee Vogel with the removal of... 11D. D to 13E. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Ajuris? Yes. Trustee Here? Yes. President Abascado? Yes. New business, all items listed for discussion and possible action. Um, 13A, ordinance granting special use site plan and building appearance approval for a gas station, convenience store, and car wash at 14 North Elmhurst Road, docket number 2011-18. Mr. Janik. Uh, <clears throat> this docket concerns a, a gas station uh, mini-mart car wash that was closed for business 
for longer than six months, and they went through, had to go back through the special use process at the Planning Commission. Uh, they spent two meetings at the Planning Commission. The second uh, meeting ended up with a unanimous vote uh, for approval. Uh, generally speaking, the property is staying uh, the same in terms of structures. The car wash is getting new mechanicals inside. Uh, there, there will continue to be a, uh, a mini mart. There will be uh, new decals put on the on the building, and the sign is going to change. That there's a, um, I believe there's a uh, an image showing the the, the sign. The, the structure of the sign will stay the same, but there'll be a electronic uh, board on it uh, showing the different prices, similar to what's at uh, across the street at the BP. Um, other improvements to the site are, are going to be. Uh, um, a grind and repavement of the uh, blacktop and uh, repair or replacement of the, the concrete on the site as well. New landscaping will be applied, new trees um, installed, similar to what's, what, what you see on the, uh, on the screen. Uh, the, the business will continue to be, as it was previously, a 24-hour day operation. The car wash will close at 9 o'clock at night. Do we have any questions? Madam President. Yes. Uh, we have uh, Trustee Lang and then Trustee Ejers. Uh, question for Mr. Janik. Uh, I did read in the report um, seal coating, but you said, you just said that it's going to be um, ground, asphalt, and resurfaced. Yeah. The, uh, the discussion at the Planning Commission was a repaving of the site. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the um, the blacktop is there. There is broken up blacktop on the site. The concrete is cracked in, in various areas, and what, what was approved at the Planning Commission was a repaving of the entire site, which to me means uh, grinding grinding off of the uh, the asphalt and then replacement of the concrete. The now that work as long, as well as the landscaping work, we're going to hold a bond, 110% uh, of the cost of that improvement, so that it can be done in the springtime. Okay. And second question. Uh, do we have any issues with the uh, securing a right of way out, out in that area? I know we are trying to gather right of ways along uh, Dundee Road, and is that something that was secured at this point? There's sidewalk uh, in front of the site. Um, I believe we have the full right of way at that location, but I, c I can double check. Okay. Thank you. The trustee. petitioners are here for any questions relative yes, to the document. Yes, Trustee Ejers. I'd like to see the petitioners yes. come forward because the last yeah, comment, you guys look like you're numb or surprised. Come on up, fellas. Can you give us your name and address for the record, please? Um, my name is Jim Spinola. I'm Vice President of Parkway Bank, uh, 4800 North Harlem Avenue, Howard Heights, Illinois, 60706. Irfan Bagat from 9739 West Irving Park Road, Shiloh Park. Thank you. Do you guys understand the condition from the Plan Commission? Uh, I, we understand it. I didn't know if we really had to break up the concrete. We we're going to, the places that were damaged, we will definitely take care of it. Um, if that's, yeah. if, if we need to do it, we'll, you know, we'll have to do it. Then. Is there broken concrete out there? Well, there, it's mostly asphalt, but there is concrete over the area where I believe that the uh, the, the tanks are, which are which is at the north northern between the uh, car wash and the the mini mart the mini mart building, and that that concrete is cracked. Um, it is it's not exactly level with the asphalt. Um, to me, I, I mean, I personally, I'd rather see a, a, basically a new site out there. Um, and if it, if the concrete is uh, is is Correct, and it's uh, it's it's not exactly flat. I, I would I, I think that it should be uh, redone. That's, that's that's my opinion. The rest of the asphalt. Uh, did you guys understand the asphalt needs to be ground down and repaving? Okay. All I would ask is you guys come up with a plan because in the past we've had petitioners come before us, especially at that site with new landscaping. Right. Okay. And yeah. guess what? The following year, it's like it was from the beginning. Take pride in your site, well, seriously, because you know what? We all live near there. We all drive by there. Take pride in what you have over there. Maintain your landscaping. Maintain your weeds. Pick up your garbage. And, you know, it's hard to code and force, you know, and the Plant Commission does a great job and, and tries to get the most bang out of, you know, for the buck from developers and stuff like that, only for us to look at it a year or two later, and it looks terrible. 
So just, you guys are going to be there, and I'm assuming you're going to be there. Take pride in it. Pretend it's your home, because you're probably going to spend more time there than you were. At home. So just, if you're putting new stuff in, take care of it. Make it look nice. Yeah, Please. Okay? That's all I have, Madam President. Do you have any other questions? Uh, if, just, just one more. I'm, I'm sorry, just to go back on this. But certainly. The, um, the condition of the Planning Commission does say the entire site is going to be repaved. So that, that, that's what you guys agreed to, I think. Um, repaving to me means all the paving needs to be replaced. I mean, not reconstruction, but... Repaving, obviously, the, there's concrete apron, so that's... Repaving would be around the... The asphalt. The asphalt, <coughs> correct? Well, I mean, the condition says resurfaced. The site is going to be resurfaced. That, that would, to me, include the concrete, if there's concrete paving, which there is, as well as the asphalt. I mean, that, that's what it says. We've got to do it, we'll do it. Okay. okay. Thank you. So move. Motion made by Trustee Adiris, second. second by Trustee here. Roll call, please. Thank Trustee you. Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Argyris? Yes. Trustee here? Yes. President Arbuscato? Yes. And uh, good luck to you, and we look uh, forward to seeing that uh, corner. I go by it every day. So what an improvement so that would be. <laughs> Thank you very much. Item 13B, resolution authorizing the village manager to execute one demolition contract with Langles Corporation for remo removal of principal building and associated structures at 2932 North Schoenbeck Road in Wheeling, Illinois. Mr. Janik. Do we have any questions? Just yeah. one real quick. Sorry. Trustee Lang. Thank you. A uh, couple things, Mark. What, what will the site look like after demolition? Uh, the site, um, well, the, the site's relatively large. I, I believe it's about three quarters of an acre. It goes back pretty far. There are um, items on the site that I'm not going to be touching, which, you know, like wood piles. Uh, there's some stuff way in the back as well. This particular contract is just for the structure itself, that is the garage and the house. House is partially destroyed by fire. Um, you don't want to go inside because some of the floors have, have uh, caved in into the basement. So strictly speaking, this contract includes tearing up the asphalt, tearing up of the sidewalk, taking the building down, taking the garage down, which is attached to the structure, taking up the garage slab, uh, dumping most of that. Um, or at least the the, uh, the paving into the basement, covering that with clean clay, the building itself, the wood structure, the deck behind it would all be hauled away. Okay. We'd put down um, soil and seed where the where the driveway was, and that that's the extent of this contract. Okay, and there's pallets of hardscape, and there's various debris in the front yard. That'll all be taken away as well. Um, I know there's some landscape brick in the front on, on a skid. Oh, you'll be taken away. Okay, so, the, and the reason I'm asking is that the next door neighbor, Mr. Spike, had called me uh, this weekend and was concerned about the demolition. He wants that site cleaned up, no doubt, but he also wants to know what Mr. Kenzie or uh, the owner can do with the site once it's, uh, or with the property once it's demoed. Mr. Kenzior owns a, um, a piece of um, single-family property. He can rebuild a single-family house on that property. Um, part of this contract is to take up the old septic system as well, the old septic tank out of the ground. Um, there, is no, there, there is no water and sewer to that site, so he would have to um, attach to water and sewer, uh, according to our code. Uh, but he could build an, another single-family house and garage on that site. Now. As I described, the site, there are other items on that site that I'm sure the neighbor probably wants to get rid of as well. Uh, I'm not going to be completely clearing the site. I mean, he won't be, he'll be allowed to keep on a site what he can relative to our, to our code. He can't store machinery on the, on the property, he can't store trailers or anything like that. Okay. Um, the neighbor, neighbor might not be exactly happy, but he should be happy that the building itself is coming down. I think that's uh, key is, is storing items on the lot 
And that's one thing that he is really concerned with because there, up until now there were things stored on the lot. Um, and then lastly, the, um, the garage is uh, rather close to the property line. You're going to take that foundation out so, so there won't be a setback problem anymore? The garage is on a slab, not a, found, oh, well, a foundation under the slab, but I'll be taking the slab up, breaking it up, and putting that in the, in the, uh, the basement of the house. Okay, so that solves all setback uh, issues. Uh, if Mr. Kenzier wants to, to build another garage, he'll have to conform to code. Thank you. Trustee Brady. Thank you. Uh, Mark, related to the uh, foundation in general, uh, the low bid for, for removal of the building as it stands is 17000 some change. <clears throat> and you said that if the foundations were to be taken out, it would be $21,000. Now, this is all going to be part of a lien that we're putting on that property to collect this money at some point in time. We're, so, yes. Yeah, so if Mr. Kenzio decides to rebuild at some point and goes for a, a construction loan, that lien is going to have to be satisfied before a bank will, will issue any... Any. No, I believe the way the lien is going to work is that if the property is transferred, then the lien would have to be paid. He can finance a home, uh, and Mr. Uh, yeah. Bill Attorney can, can comment on this too, but I believe uh, he can finance, he, he can build a house, he can finance a house, he can do, uh, you know, wherever he wants on the property. Once it's transferred, then the lien would, would come due. Uh, to, to add to that, that's correct, but if he goes for financing, I think Trustee Argeris can speak to this, a lender is going to want that lien Link taken care up. of right. because they will not want to be second in line right. exactly. because we can actually foreclose on that lien at some point. So, so he, you may get paid sooner than, than you think, think on this. So why don't we make it either for Mr. Kenzio in the future or, or, or if he sells it or if we end up with the property, whatever happens to that piece of property, why don't we just get rid of the foundation and, and, and have a clean slate there for an extra $4,000 that we're going to get back someday anyways, one way or another. Uh, I, I think we should just... Do, do it the right way and, and be, to, to, to leave the foundation in is, is going to cost a lot of money to somebody later on in the, in the, in the future, whether it's Mr. Kenzio or whoever, you know, and, and maybe, maybe be up to a point where it would be a deterrent from somebody buying or building on that property. Uh, I'm just, just a thought. You know, four thousand dollars isn't a bad deal to, to to break up and get rid of some some foundations. Trustee Brady, just to respond, uh, we had talked about that at a staff level and uh, wanted to leave that option for the board to decide. Uh, with the recommendation coming from staff, we wanted to do what the responsibility uh, uh, of staff is, and that is to to level that building and and clean up the site. Uh, the forest site that you're talking about, uh, we believe, is a good idea, but wanted to leave that opportunity for the board to decide to make that additional encumbrance. I think if we're to machinery, now would be the time to do it. And, and, and if, if the rest of the trustees at least don't want to go that far, at least pull out the, the foundation that uh, is, is uh, illegal according to our codes and not six feet away from the, uh, the property line. At least pull that garage foundation out. But I would say just take the rest of it out and get rid of it but for four right. grand. It's a cheap price. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's the problem with that, yeah. Yes. Did anybody else have any comments? No. Then we would like to change the dollar amount by four thousand three hundred. Three hundred dollars. I think it would be twenty one three hundred instead of seventeen. <coughs> so moved. Motion made by Trustee Lang. Second. Second by Trustee Adiris. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Argyris? Yes. Trustee Hare? Yes. President Aviscato? Yes. So the dollar amount on there would be 21.3. 21? 21.3. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> um, item 13C, resolution authorizing the village president and clerk to execute a temporary construction easement on village property at 99 North Wolf Road for the Illinois Department of Transportation related to certain construction and grading work along North Wolf Road. Mr. Ferrillo. Thank you, President Abrascato. Before you tonight is a temporary construction easement that the state uh, is seeking to obtain from all of the property owners um, at the center where the police substation is located, 99 North Wolf Road. <clears throat> this will be used at the time when the state begins its um, Wolf Road reconstruction. This uh, temporary construction easement has absolutely nothing to do with a jurisdictional transfer of Wolf Road. This allows the state to 
to use part of our property as well as some of the other properties in that center for equipment and the like when they start to grade uh, along Wolf Road. We have been informed that that project is going to be put off until after the Heritage Park project is completed, <clears throat> but through the negotiation efforts of uh, Mr. Stavros and Mr. Janik, um, the state has informed us now that they will be doing a complete reconstruct rather than just a resurfacing, which was important to the village before we decided to take a jurisdictional transfer. <clears throat> now, they're paying us for this temporary construction easement based on an appraisal. It's $1,500. Uh, the state's trying to obtain the easements that it can voluntarily. For the others that it cannot obtain, and there will be a few, it will go through the eminent domain process. The uh, state negotiator told me that they've obtained several in the center. There are several that they haven't obtained as of yet. <clears throat> so again, this has nothing to do with the village agreeing to take jurisdictional transfer. Trustee here, you have something? Sure, I just want to thank staff. Um, thank you very much for your efforts with the state to get them to move on this project. Um, if no one else has anything, I'd like to make a motion. Second. I have a motion made by Trip. Go ahead. I have a question if you don't mind. Go ahead. Uh, it's been quite a few years since we even talked about this and seen the plans on it. And, and to be quite honest with you, I don't even remember what the plans look like anymore. And I wonder if Just this is still two years choose. off, probably in, in the in the making before the state steps up and starts doing anything, mm -hmm. according to the memo that we got uh, the other day. And I and I, I'd like to do a review of what, what the final plans are one one more time before uh, while we have time. If there's something we see that we don't like, we can change it before they start. First of all, secondly, is this going to include uh, that piece of property down by the airport where we go from four lanes to two lanes to four lanes? I hope, while the state's out here, where they stopped their reconstruction uh, by, what, what is that, Marquardt or? Marquardt. Marquardt. That's where. You know, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life, and it's mm -hmm. still there. They stopped 800 feet short of making it a four lane all the way. Right. And I'd like, I'd like to see the state fix that as part of this project, so Wolf Road is, is, is a nice, smooth throughway. But I'd like to have, whether it be a workshop or whether you at least distribute the final final drawings to the the, uh, the, the trustees and, mm -hmm. so we can take a look at them and, uh, and, and see what's going on. It showed the, the pizza, Joe's Pizza there. Mm -hmm. When we showed the plans before, there was some question there that it would eliminate some of his parking or something when they did something <laughs> on the road. But we can take a look at it, look at it again, because I don't believe... All the trustees that are here now were there when we right. looked at it. Real quick, has that been yeah. engineered already, finally engineered, or still in the process? The, the dimension is in the layout's been engineered. Yeah. Um, the only difference is now they'll do a complete reconstruct, which they'll tear everything out and build it from the uh, sub base up, or before they were going to. Mm -hmm. Underneath the existing pavement, there's some concrete, and they were going to... Um, grind off the asphalt on the existing pavement and then resurface it and just add, uh, I believe it was uh, five feet on each side, which would put a center lane in there. Mm -hmm. So it has one lane in each direction and a center turn lane is what will ultimately be. Um, nice one, it's done. <clears throat> curbing gutter, no ditches, storm sewer, all that. But it, um, it has nothing to do with the south end of Wolf Road down there by Palatine. Well, maybe we could get their attention to take care of it while their equipment is here. So, and then one other thing, too. Uh, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Keep going up. <laughs> <laughs> Senior moment. Ah, good. Senior moment. Now I don't feel bad. <laughs> the trip opened up and it went away. <laughs> uh, related to that, I, I, I was going to, there was another thing, issue I want to bring. It, it is going to be tr totally reconstructed. Uh, oh, I know what it was. I, well, we're still burying the power lines, too, right? Yeah, we're yeah. just trying to uh, acquire the rest of the easements <clears throat> so we can move forward. Tony, is this, we're, years ago when we started talking about this, you know, that, uh, that, that sanitary line that, that runs along Wolf Road that the services the, the north to the east part of the village, and what, I, I thought there was some mention of that being in, increased in size. Or we took care of that project last that's year. Done? Yeah. Okay, that's, year. So that's what you did was it. They right. do more on that? Yeah. Perfect. Good. Thank you. That's it. Motion made by Trustee here. 
Second by Trustee Second. Vogel. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Argeris? Yes. Trustee Here? Yes. President Avascado? Yes. Item 13D discussion regarding proposed amendments to the Wheeling Municipal Code regarding soliciting in the streets. Mr. Frondelis. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, this evening we have a discussion to pick up where we left off uh, last week based on the same uh, ordinance that was written for your consideration then. Uh, we've included this week some memos for background information and some options that we've broken down into essentially three categories. Uh, one, the uh, ordinance can stay as written currently. Or two, we can do a complete ban on all street solicitation. Or three, we can allow solicitation with, with regulations. This goes back to a request that originated with the village board and was followed up by uh, our two public safety chiefs from the police and fire department um, uh, assessing the, the conditions of the program and recognizing that there is a safety concern for having the public uh, walking where there is vehicle traffic. And they have each included a memo to their opinion uh, suggesting that there should be a ban because of the safety concerns of uh, people in the street mixing pedestrians with vehicles. And those have been provided for your consideration. We can uh, rewrite this, discuss it, and create it in any way that the board sees fit. If you, I think the way to start this conversation is to begin with, uh, does the board feel that there is a safety concern with having pedestrians in the street? Uh, from there, we can move to looking at some of the other conditions that should be considered uh, in this, and with this topic. Trustee Jers. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to untable it. Pardon me? Does untable it? Yes, please. That's because we tabled it. That's correct. I have a motion to untable. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Trustee Lang. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. Trustee Argeris. Yes. Trustee Here. Yes. President Eviscato. Yes. Thank you. Now, do we have any questions? Do we have any? Trustee Brady. And President, uh, <clears throat> remember, I was the one that kind of brought the issue up about, yes. about this. And uh, I've done some investigating the past two weeks. Uh, regarding this and found out that uh, this is a this is a, a big part of uh, the the fundraising aspect of, 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 of a lot of good uh, organizations and the one that I particularly am, am informed about is the Knights of Columbus as I remember a member uh, I talked to several of the guys that, that, that are involved in, in the, the actual solicitations on the street corners and they don't feel threatened at all by, by working traffic as a matter of fact when Back years ago, when uh, when uh, uh, ALS was, uh, uh, we were, we got heavily involved in that. After uh, uh, Trustee uh, Layman uh, passed away, uh, I worked that corner several times by myself, and it found no problems with it. Of course, that was before it was uh, it was rebuilt. Nevertheless, I also found out that at least 75 percent of the revenue that we collect comes from. The street corner. The, the street corner, and especially that one is the biggest one of all at Milwaukee and Dundee. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, I, I think we'd be we'd be probably uh, uh, wiping out any 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 uh, other aspect of fundraising. We're not allowed. No, nobody's allowed to to set up in front of Walmart. They don't allow and in Sam's Club. They don't allow solicitations from their stores. That kind of limits uh, some good organizations uh, that uh, like uh, like the Poppies. Uh, see, uh, you know the. the uh, and, and, and of course, we sell the Tootsie Rolls and some of these other ones that, that are, are, are do good for people that will discourage them from, from doing this fundraiser. And, and it's just, I don't know, I don't think it's right. I, I, we have had no fatalities. I don't think we even had any injuries on any street corners. I, I, I can certainly understand both our, our safety officers being concerned, but then again, you know, if it ain't broke, why fix it? And, and I, don't, I haven't seen a problem with it. I think the people that I see on street corners are usually usually pretty adept to uh, 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 the safety and, and staying out of the way. They they get the routine down and and, and they work on it. Uh, I like to, I like to see 
You know, I've, after I've been thinking about this, I said, let's not do anything. We'll leave it the way it is. To be honest with you. I'd like to make a motion. Trust, to, oh, excuse me, Trustee Hine. Thank you. Um, I know this is a lifeline for a lot of our organizations in town, but there's also a safety issue. So we're going to have to build something into this ordinance where certain safety equipment devices are going to have to be worn, vests, so on and so forth, before we're going to allow them onto right. these, onto these uh, intersections, right. yeah, especially the major intersections like Milwaukee and Dundee and whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe the police department can come up with some ideas on what they should be wearing because when these folks come there to do that, they, they're, they're dressed up for the winter and all that, but they forget to put their, their, their safety vests on and so on and so forth. So I think we've got to plug that in a little bit. And it is the lifeline for a lot of people, so we're just going to have to be a little careful. <clears throat> Thank you. Trustee Lane. Thank you. So, so according to the list that um, Martin put together from, for us, there really isn't any charity, at least, it does it multiple times a year. Um, it, so it looks like everyone, my, my concern originally was that, you know, you have some of these out of town charities that are doing it every month if they could. Um, and, and I think that is, can be a problem if we don't put some language in to it. It looks like the Knights, for instance, or the Firefighters Association has done it once a year. So if we have more, no more than once a year, I think it'll cover the agencies that need to solicit within Wheeling and then any of the others, like um, you can make it outreach, whatever the other one is. Limit them to once a year as well, or anyone else. Um, so you would like to make a recommendation that I, we allow only once a year solicitation? Yes. So the firefighters do it once a year, but they do it, I think, for two days. I'm not sure. can't remember. It's usually on a Friday and Saturday. Is that once a year, Chief? Is that my... And once a year is an event. I mean, a weekend-wide or, or something like okay. that. Not, not... Okay. Thank you. Do I have any other... As far as uh, gear, if that would be the correct word, I see them all with their yellow... Vests. Yellow vest and everything. There's state code that dictates what needs to be worn yeah. out in the uh, when when you're soliciting on streets. <coughs> so your recommendation. Oh, you think uh, recommendation to approve the docket. Well, tonight we're just doing discussion, discussion so then we have to give oh, the recommendation oh. to rewrite to write this okay. or to bring it back to vote on it at our next regular meeting. So. <clears throat> Recommendation, uh, Trustee Lang? Uh, yes. Do you want to leave it the way it is? With, no, with, uh, with uh, limiting to the once per year. Trustee Brady? Um, I'll go along with the once a year. Trustee here? Same. Trustee Hine? Once a year is all right. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Trustee Vogel? Yes. <laughs> Trustee Ajiris? Sure. I'd like it to stay just the way it was with the once a year is you know, fine. Just, can I? The, sure. The list we got from Martin is the list of permitted dates, correct? That's correct. Is, I mean, I looked at that list and I can guarantee you those guys are out there in corners that weren't on this list. And that's the most difficult part. Enforcement's okay. the most difficult part of this ordinance. Allowing so. solicitation becomes difficult because it, it covers, you know, all three shifts of the police department and, and it becomes, um, with, with all due respect, if if someone sees someone on the street Without and they permit. call the office and say, "Is anybody permitted to be out?" and they say no, then you nail them. And that's. I, I mean, it takes a phone call, doesn't it? I mean, I, I, what's what? I don't understand the enforcement problem. I think the key is if somebody calls it in. I think most people, when they see the street solicitation, assume that it's permitted. Well, no, no, Bill, Bill, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm talking about an officer. If, if an officer sees someone in there, I mean, maybe do you have a meeting before the officers go out on the street and you can say, today, someone's permitted to be on the street for solicitation. If you see anybody, they're okay. And if they don't hear that, it's illegal. I mean, isn't there we can some handle it from way an that's internal fairly 
simple to do without <laughs> causing a lot of hassle? Once a month, give a list. Once a week, give a list. Yeah, it, it's, it's easy enough to handle. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Hain. Um, I'm going to back up a little bit on that uh, the last vote relative to once a year for all the organizations. Um, let me just ask a question. Are they going to have to come before the board each time they they come in to do this, or is it going to be a staff thing? It's always been a staff. It's always okay. staff that does. They go in and get then the. Can we put something in there where? Consent. If one of our if one of our organizations has want a special mm -hmm. event or something going on, other than what they normally do, they're going to have to have some type of mechanism to to somebody's got to approve it up to one more for the for the year, on a, with some type of stipulations. But if one of our larger organizations has something big going on, uh, or we decide to do something with, with a festival or something to that effect, and these organizations start participating in it, is that going to hamper them going on the street to do that? Uh, you know, I, uh, case in point being uh, the uh, family fest type operation that we have here, you know? Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to handcuff these people who are saying it's going to be just once a year. Period. Well, I think the the other is for a special event type thing. That isn't something that will come under this solicitation ordinance. The solicitation primarily ordinance, if I'm understanding you right, and I might be incorrect also, is for those organizations, organizations that is worldwide almost, and is statewide almost always, all over. They have it on the same day for the, uh, for the fire department and for uh, the Knights of Columbus uh, and the Lions. And uh, the Rotary does not do that. The Lions does it, but we haven't had that recently because we don't have a Lions Club in the Village of Wheeling, so they haven't done that. But I think for the other organizations, for the other that you're talking about, that is something that comes as an event, and we have to approve that at that time. And they normally don't go out, go out on the street. They might go into a business, they get permission, and they do it inside the business as they're sitting, and most of us see that. Even for the Cancer Society, they don't do it out, but they do it. Right. But putting it to that just one awesome. time a year for these organizations, I think, is too rigid. We're not giving them any leeway to to expand on some special events that they're going to do. I really, I think we're really tying them up a little bit. President, Michelle? if I may, um, Mr. A couple, uh, a couple of things. Trustee Lang had mentioned once per year, but that would be uh, an event. It sounds like two consecutive days might be allowed for for the event. The other issue, and President Abascado was, was right on, the Illinois Vehicle Code doesn't allow, it prohibits solicitation in the streets unless a municipality allows it. And when a municipality allows it, uh, the, the wording is, uh, the organization has to be registered with the Attorney General as a charitable organization as provided for by state law. And then, as the President indicated, uh, engaged in statewide fundraising activity, et cetera. So unless you're a charitable organization, you don't fit in. You don't fit into this. Um, but if it's one day, one one time per year, that can be two days. <clears throat> that that was the vote that was on the table. Buffalo Grove allows two times per year. Would that be more? Yes. Palatable. Yes. Rather than just just one. I think the one time are too restrictive. Well, I haven't seen any problem with the way the solicitation has been, but if it's a more comfort level, just in case nationwide they decide to do uh, EM uh, muscular dystrophy and they decide to do it twice a year or the Knights of Columbus, we could make that stipulation or have the solicitation ordinances there, and if something does come, then we'd get it from the board and we'd have to give that approval. <coughs> And that would work the same area. Man. It's gotta be so what would be easier? Do we want to reconsider twice a year, or do we want to leave it at the once a year? Just leave it alone. I'm still good at once a year. I am also. 
So I think, uh, Trustee Hine, it is a consensus of the once a year. That's fine. If something does come up, of course, we can always revisit that and look at it at the time if that organization, and if it becomes nationwide, you know, you don't want to hold back, hold back your village because the whole world is doing it twice a year instead of once. So. I still would like to enter the, the safety vests or whatever that, that they have to wear rather than just regular street clothes. Uh, I they think that's important. We can add that they have to follow state code. I believe it's already part of the ordinance, but we'll, we'll make sure. Thank you. Um, 11D became 13E. 13E. Uh, Trustee Brady. Thank you. You know, oh, did you want me to read it? Know. we've had the sidewalk fund for a long, long time. <clears throat> and uh, even going back to my days on the planning commission, uh, when we would push to get sidewalks put in, uh, as a doctor came in, whether it be a new, new construction or, or remodeling or, or whatever the case may be, uh, we had the petitioner Sorry. before us. Okay. We, we, we tried to get new sidewalks because I think, I think the plan for the village is to have sidewalks on every street at some point in time. When a business uh, comes. You know, we collect this money right now, and, and, and I, I, I guess we call it a fund. Is there a separate fund for the sidewalks, number one? I mean, is, is, it, is it actually listed as the sidewalk fund so we keep track of how much money there is to, to spend on sidewalks? Uh, Mr. Monashen can answer that. Yeah, uh, um, we don't have an actual fund called the sidewalk fund, but what we have is um, a reservation of the general <coughs> fund fund balance for sidewalk fund purposes. So we track it with a, a spreadsheet. As sidewalk projects get completed, we reallocate those funds to, <coughs> to pay for the cost of the sidewalk project, but there's not a separate fund per se. Is there, is there a log? Uh, kept uh, to to uh, identify the uh, uh, contributors. There is. There is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good because I know in the past we had to rely on uh, one of our one of our most astute uh, members of the uh, the village staff to to remember who gave it, who did, and that was a little that was a little shaky. But uh, you know, I I know every year we 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 put in for X amount of feet running feet of of, of new sidewalk. Would it be two thousand feet this year? 5,000 feet, whatever the case may be. What is, is there, is there a, an end in sight for this? When, is there a year that, that we have decided that we'd like to have the whole village with sidewalks, especially this day and age when, when, when we're talking about walking and bicycling and, 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 and alternate methods of transportation? Because I, at the rate we're going, uh, probably it's gonna take another lifetime or two before this village gets sidewalks everywhere. Uh, from when I drive around and see where there isn't sidewalks. You know, I don't know how many feet of streets we have with sidewalks and how, what's left to, to put sidewalks on. And, and the, the, the thing of it is, uh, you know, where are we going with this fund? I mean, are we, do we want sidewalks? If we do, we should attack it a little bit more uh, uh, aggressively. And, and that being a point, $10 a square foot, that price is it's a good price. It was a good price when I retired eight years ago. That was the going price to, to put in new sidewalks. So, I mean, it's a good deal. And, and what's going to happen if we collect money from somebody right now that's developing and don't want to put their sidewalks in, but I'll give you the money, so I'll give us $10 a square foot, I guarantee you once the economy picks up and we start rolling again, 10 years from now, that might double. What are we going to do then? We'll be losing money. You know, and, and I think it would be a twofold thing if we increased the contribution part of sidewalks to... Twelve or fifteen dollars a square foot. Now, now the developers got the option of putting it in at a lot lower rate, or putting it into the, to the sidewalk fund that will have the money in the future to do the job. Uh, you know, and, and, and make it make put a little pressure on him to maybe go ahead and put the sidewalks in because we're leaving a lot of people off the hook not putting sidewalks in by having this fund. It's easy for them throw money at it. You know, it'll go away. It's our responsibility now. We got all this money and and. Yeah, I know we, we, we prioritize uh, what we're doing uh, through, through a lot of different ways that we're, we're planning sidewalks and that there, but I don't know if it's, if it's helping us or hurting us. I, I'd like to just, you know, just get, get to know what you guys are planning on this year. 
I guess I'll, I, I'll let Tony talk a little bit more, but I would, I would say that the fund is meant to only be uh, an option when the actual installation of sidewalks can't happen due to any number of, of site problems or control problems uh, on a particular project. So it's not meant to be a, you could put them in now or you could just give us the money. It's not meant to be that easily um, uh, pushed aside. Uh, Tony, as far as the, the long range plans, uh, certainly the board had directed years ago where sidewalks should be in town and I don't know that we can put a specific end date on it. Uh, I think there are too many determining factors that are beyond our control. Right, there's, uh, <clears throat> there's issues of right of way on easements. Um, case in point, Hintz Road, Milwaukee Avenue. Uh, that plan has been designed and we ran it down Hintz Road as much as we could. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I believe Mr. Ferrillo is still working with the uh, storage place maybe to get uh, an easement around that corner, which can link back up to Burnside. I mean, we have areas that normally what that fund does is it, it fills gapped areas. It's not just, you know, we just don't go out and run uh, two blocks of an industrial park and then stop. But it's more of a filling for the gap areas. Um, that fund's been used for uh, Northgate Parkway, okay, that was 90 some thousand when we put that eight foot walk in to Lake Cook Road. The fund was used additionally for uh, active down Wheeling Road, which as you may remember, their contribution was a little short. <laughs> so, I mean, we do try to use to fill in the gaps as, as we go. I understand it, and it's a good plan. It's just that, I, you know, just off the top of your head without fitting you down any facts, what would you say, what are we halfway, 60, 80 percent done with sidewalks in this town? You know, what, what, what would you consider? Uh, a good percentage of, of areas that we have left to put sidewalks in? Well, most of the industrial parks don't have it, other than along the main road, like at Northgate, and um, uh, the uh, <coughs> industrial park uh, just north of uh, Hintz Road on Chaddock there, they have sidewalks, but when you get into the other end of it, by, uh, um, by the school bus company, homes testing and all that, Glen Avenue, there's no sidewalks there, there's none going on the uh, uh, south side of Chaddock, down to Mark Court and uh, Mesner and all that, there's there's Yellow Freight has some, Ingus has, uh, I mean, uh, Insar has some, Antifoil, but that's about it for that whole subdivision in there. A lot of industrial doesn't have, none in the it, Holbrook area. You know, it, it's a shame because it seems, especially when in, in, a, in a fairly nice day, uh, around midday, around lunchtime, you, you ride through that, that South Chaddock uh, subdivision there, the, the industrial subdivision, and you'll see dozens and dozens of people walking on the street because there's no sidewalks to walk on. Right. You know, and, 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 and so that tells you there is a need for sidewalks. And I just wonder, because a lot of the, a lot of the, 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 the excuses we get when somebody doesn't want to put a sidewalk in, well, I'm, I'm the only one within, within uh, this entire uh, section that, that would have to have a sidewalk in there. You know, if our plan is eventually get sidewalks in there, you got to start someplace, you know. And collecting money and putting it in a fund, which is sitting there, and, and you use it, and, and probably, in, in a sense, you know, you're picking areas that are that are important uh, for sidewalks. But but if you got a guy there ready to put them in, I would say, you know, let him put them in. Either that, or or if he wants to put it in the fund, if if, if he or we or whoever the the, the case may be the, decides that the, the money should be going to the fund. Don't make it ten dollars a square foot. Make it twelve or fifteen. Because we'll have to tell you that's what it's going to cost us later on. Sure. Well, I think the economy, the way it is now, the ten dollars <coughs> is what we have for this year. But we do address it every year. So next year, address it. Economy starts to get better. Yeah, it's going to take a, a few years, but you know, I, I'm telling you, ten dollars a, a square foot. I retired in in, in in '04, January of '04, and that's why I was paying for sidewalks in '04. 
Right. So here, here it's it's eight years later, and it's still the same price. Well, it used to be seven dollars oh five. Yeah. Then seven seventy five and oh seven. <laughs> then we went up to ten dollars from oh eight. So for eight, nine, ten, and now eleven, it's up to ten dollars. So, Mr. Ferrillo. Uh, the resolution, Trustee Brady, provides that we're approving the amount to be determined by means of an engineer's opinion of probable cost approved by the village engineer but in no case should so the unit price be less than ten dollars per square foot this resolution would allow that number to be higher than ten if there is an engineer's opinion of probable cost that is higher than ten that our village engineer approves so i think we're covered well i no, i i don't agree with you because ten dollars a square foot i guarantee you will be the price that they'll be collecting, uh, you know, you, and, and we got caught uh, short in, in one instance, big time, uh, by somebody not really paying attention to what the, the, the engineering problems are, and, and, and uh, somebody uh, high up in, in staff here uh, or, or in a village board uh, promised sidewalks, and it cost us. So I would say the minimum should be at least fifteen dollars a square foot for contract minimum. Let the minimum go up. Okay. I got a question. Yes, I, Trustee Brady. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, Trustee Jers. I can never understand the sidewalk fund thing because for many years there was a sidewalk fund that nobody knew where the sidewalk fund was. I mean, yeah, your spreadsheets and everything else prior to your time. But if the, if if it seemed deemed fit to have the sidewalk based on engineering and everything else, and and developer is willing to pay, why aren't we just putting them in? Why do we have to worry about increased costs 10, 15 years down the road to put in a sidewalk that the plan commission and this board approved and our engineers and staff said it needs to go? If they want to pay it, take the money and put them in. Why are we putting it into a special fund to put it there later? It doesn't make sense. At the time, I believe the... Well, we're talking now. I know the time... Well, the, right. because the way the program was set up was what you're really buying is credit, and that way the village was able to prioritize where sidewalks needed to be versus in, in this scenario where we just force people to put it in, where you would have a sidewalk that starts at nowhere and ends at nowhere. So in order to avoid that, you are contributing to a fund and therefore buying credit that the village could then use to put in sidewalks that could create an actual thoroughfare. Certainly, we can change the way the program operates and say, look, if you do anything, you're installing sidewalks, period. Right. Uh, we will, <laughs> no, for, I, for a time, it, right. the village will look very scattered because we will have no sidewalk, sidewalk, no sidewalk. So it was for continuity sake. And, and years ago, I, and I, I understand that, but boy, we've come a long way. There's the sidewalks going up everywhere with all the new development and everything else and the replacement. So I think that philosophy needs to be looked at again and maybe do an overview and say, wait a minute, you know what? 90% of the sidewalks that are being requested could go up. They're not going to nowhere anymore. I mean, you could have made the same argument by Horker Farm. Who needed sidewalks that went nowhere? Today, there's sidewalks that go all the way almost to Lake Cook Road. There is. There, yeah, but 10 years ago, we don't need sidewalks there. It's there. So I think we've come a long way. Maybe you guys need to look at that and give it as, as a tool for the plan commission to look at, because I know they're always asking for sidewalks, and I know we said on there, ask for sidewalks that went to nowhere. Well, I think that nowhere has come to uh, somewhere today. And because I, I can never understand taking money from somebody, and 10 years down the road, we're putting sidewalks that somebody gave us 10 years ago that we don't know where the money's at. I mean, not today, Michael, but your predecessors. We always asked about this magic sidewalk fund, that everybody said, well, it went into the general fund. So what does that tell you? Today it's different. And I think maybe staff should look at that a little bit, give that tool to the PC and for the future. So we don't have $15 or $20, like Ken says, down the road that we're paying because we only collected 10 from these guys. But the $10 is a, it is a great price. Ken's right. It's been like that for many years, and hopefully it encourages people to uh, do some sidewalk building or replacing. That's all I have. So do we have a motion or do we have, what did you want to change? Do you want to change that to raise the cost? Or do you want to leave that cost as it is, as was read by trustee, I mean by Mr. Ferrillo? Can we? And that it'll be no less than $10, but if the engineering and et cetera says it's 15, then 
the establishment will have to pay fifteen dollars. Madam President, if I might, yes, I, I think we probably could do it with both, and, and I'll let the attorney work on it. But I think it should be fifteen dollars a contribution. But I think the ordinance should also read that sidewalks must be installed uh, 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 at the time of the development or at the time of, of, of the request uh, uh, for development or whatever is going on. And if the circumstances warrant that they cannot for a, a legitimate reason, then, then $15 be the minimum that we collect. You know, so that it, more or less we're saying that we, we want sidewalks, but, but if, in fact, for whatever the reason, maybe maybe the state's going to come by and widen this, like like north side of Dundee Road. Mm -hmm. The state's going to come down here someday and wipe everything out. So it wouldn't be it would be fruitless to put new sidewalks in right now. We need easements and everything else. But if a developer came there, we certainly want to grab the money. If it pleases the board, perhaps staff can work on some language so that you have something specific in front of you that you can say yes or no to. We'll Good. take the comments uh, from this evening's meeting and try to put something together that. Good that accommodates all of those things. Trustee Lane. Um, from <coughs> my uh, days on the plan commission, I do remember that there have been some um, requests of, develop or of, of businesses to put in sidewalks uh, when they don't have major site plan changes, and I think that's unfair. Um, so we have to watch that too, and, and, and just, if, if someone has a major site plan, plan change, then perhaps sidewalks are in order. But if they're changing the facade or they're, they're sign. <laughs> making a sign change, yeah. that, that is not grounds to ask them for a new sidewalk, right. unfortunately. So just keeping that in mind. So in this case, will we uh, table, table, table. table this and then they'll come I'll back the to us with that? I'll make that motion. Okay, we have a motion to table second. by Trustee Brady, second by Trustee Ajiris. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Argyris? Yes. Trustee Here? Yes. President Abascado? Yes. Official communications, first of all, Mr. Saros, all the comments I've heard and everything, I thank you for the snow removal and the good job that uh, the staff did do uh, in the place of business where I'm at. Uh, many people came in and says, boy, the minute we hit wheeling, we know where we're at because everything is clear and easy for us to go. So please I'll pass it on let, the uh, let them all know that because it was an excellent <coughs> job and it was easy to motivate and get around. So thank you very much. Do we have any other comments? I got a fact I'd like to share with somebody. Pardon me? I have a fact I'd like to share with somebody, if I may. I mean, and the it's a fact, fact is? Well, the fact is that we receive something in our packet, and I think that it's a good thing that we share with everybody, and that is uh, the memo that came from Community Development in 2011. You know, perceptions out there that staff doesn't do anything, we don't do anything, and it's all status quo, and, it, you know, everybody sits around here and does nothing. But here's a fact for 2011. During the 2011 season, the Community Development Department processed 1,650 building and engineering permits representing a total construction valuation of over $46 million in this community. Total permit fees associated with this construction totaled over $764,000, which is an increase of 159% of what was budgeted. Continued investment into buildings and properties in the village indicates increasingly favorable regard for the municipality by property owners and investors. And I think this is what it's all about. You know, we talk about budgets, we talk about taxation. But these are things that are going to hold taxation in line. And good kudos to all the staff, not just the community development, but I know public works is part of that, the administration is all part of that. But you know what? In a down economy of gloom and doom that we've been hearing for the last two, three years, and to read something like that needs to be shared and get rid of that perception out there that these guys don't do anything and we don't do anything. So that's kudos to the plan commission and everybody else who's been part of that. So Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anything else? If not, do I have a motion to approve the bills December 29th, January 11th? So moved. Motion made by Trustee Vogel. Second. Second by Trustee Here. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Argyris? Yes. Trustee Here? Yes. President Abascado? Yes. The board will go into executive session for the disposition of property owned by the Village of Wheeling. The appointment, employment, compensation, dis 
discipline, performance, or dismissal of a specific employee <clears throat> or employees of the Village of Wheeling. Do I have a motion? So 745 to go into executive session. Motion made by Trustee Ajiris, second by Trustee Hine. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Trustee Ajiris? Yes. Trustee here? Yes. President of Wisconsin? Yes, the board goes into executive session at 745. And they will, we will go out of regular session at 745, going into executive session at 8 o'clock.